Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the guide section. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the Shinobi class. Uh, before we start, as always a shameless plug, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, feel free to do so and you might want to leave a positive comment. It takes you only a second, but it goes a long way. Uh, with that being said, let's move into the Shinobi, which is kind of the spin-off of the um, Assault character class of the normal um, XCOM, but with a focus on really doing that uh, recon, uh, recon kind of stealth um, uh, mode and using the sword much more. Prior to uh, the War of the Chosen expansion, uh, the Shinobi was uh, the yeah, I would say class or core concept before the Reaper came up uh, that really uh, excelled in uh, yeah spot, uh, spotting out enemy packs uh, while still staying hidden. And a lot of the abilities that you will see um, re revolve around that character concept. With the um, development of the Reaper, on the other hand, of course, said Reaper has uh, definitely overtaken uh, the um, Shinobi in its ability to scout, but the Shinobi still retains a nice ability uh, to do melee damage. And although it is not as good as the scout in scouting and not as uh, potent in melee damage as the Templar would be, there are still a couple of arguments why you would like that, uh, why you still would like that class, despite the fact that it is not a hero class, so you can take multiples of those. Um, Shinobis make for excellent um, uh, commanders, since many of the commander ability or officer abilities can be used uh, from uh, the stealth. So that will give them more agency, which is why you also see that many of uh, my Shinobis are indeed um, uh, officers of some uh, sort. Let's dive into the Shinobis uh, three tracks, which is Saboteur, an unnamed uh, middle track, as well as Kenshi, um, that is the melee focused uh, track. Saboteur really is the scouting track, Kenshi is the melee focused track, and the middle track is, for all intents and purposes, uh, more um, kind of a weapon focused, almost skirmisher type of um, uh, type of track with a couple of interesting abilities. Let's take a look here. So first up, Lance Corporal, Ghost Walker. You can activate that in order to reduce the detection range for uh, the remainder um, of the turn by 25%. Can be good if you want to uh, sneak up Ghost Walker. If you're fully focusing on that recon role is um, the way to go. Let me get some of the um, reasoning why I like to go uh, down a more aggressive route out of the way. If I purely want to have a recon in kind of an extremely difficult mission, I would go for the Reaper and just use uh, that character. Um, more often than not, you find yourself in a situation where you need all hands on deck and really having someone who's not participating can be a drag. Uh, in other words, uh, the way that specifically more difficult missions are uh, designed at the moment with massive packs of 10, 12 enemies uh, that immediately ambush you, uh, do not leave a lot of room for counterplay where you can spot them out, single out a pack, uh, and then um, slowly but surely whittle them down. The reality is more often than not you have a pretty full-on uh, engagement ahead of you and then uh, that is where you need um, the Shinobi to contribute and they can uh, very much contribute. Lone Wolf um, uh, is pretty similar to the sniper um, middle um, um, option uh, an option for the Shinobi to basically be away from the team and then just use um, its gun uh, to continuously harass. Um, I don't think that it is very fitting into the kit yet and I would much rather go for the plus 10 aim, plus 1 damage blade master, which means that melee uh, attacks are a uh, uh, secured hit. With me melee vulnerability on sectoids and co, um, that's really a very, very strong ability, and I personally like uh, to basically get the um, uh, Shinobi out of um, concealment relatively soon and just participate in the combat as a melee uh, participant. Moving on, Shadow Step. Soldier doesn't trigger Overwatch uh, fire. 
which is nice if you're uh, charging towards the enemy. Um, more often than not, I do have an assault with me that is actually triggering the overwatch instead of using the shinobi to run in and then um, uh, kill whatever target is overwatching. Alternatively, you can use grenades and, um, and area suppression uh, to get rid of massive overwatch uh, blo uh, blobs. Uh, that uh, kind of frees up the skill for me. It's just how I generally construct teams. If you do not have those tools available, Shadow Step would be a good alternative. Executioner, um, yet another bonus together with Lone Wolf for injured targets. The idea is that you kind of like a like a lone wolf, um, um, single out um, maybe injured targets and then uh, try to hit them um, and even crit against them. Uh, the problem that I'm seeing with the middle tree is uh, you want to have speed on this character, uh, which is why they very often carry um, SMGs. The middle tree really does not uh, necessarily incentivize uh, that too much. Uh, you might in the middle tree end up with a kind of spec down shotgun or an assault rifle without the real great skills to use them until very, very late in uh, the game at Master Sergeant. Uh, competitive um, uh, with 10 dodge and uh, parrying uh, melee attacks, just phenomenal. It's a great deal. Uh, it's one of those combo packages, just like formidable, uh, which I can highly recommend. So it's a it's a great option uh, to just charge in and basically be immune to melee attacks. Also great to have uh, the character class in front of the loss and just tank them. Next up, uh, Sergeant Rank uh, Covert. Uh, enemies have automatically a 25% smaller detection radius, which is a permanent one. It stacks with Ghost Walker, but if you have this one, you don't need to have Ghost Walker on top of it. It is really good, and for what it's worth, uh, together with the SMG that also has a similar ability to reduce the detection rate. Um, it really helps you and is good enough as a detection reduction. Hard targeting uh, allows you to gain a lot of uh, dodge uh, per enemy that you can see. It's actually something that I was um, uh, intending to try uh, because I'm not building them too stealthy lately and hard target can be a nice little defense um, uh, because specifically if you run into a, a group of enemies uh, the stacking dodge can be helpful. Cutthroat, uh, you melee attacks against biological enemy, ignore their armor, have a higher crit chance and do two additional crit damage. That's good. My main problem often um, uh, are mechanical units so so an ability that is limited on one uh, particular type needs to be stronger than just a bit of armor ignoring, which I'm getting um, uh, from other sources. Um, this here is not shredding the armor, elsewise it would be really good. This here is essentially just ignoring it for you, your purpose only. So co uh, covert, probably prime ability here, arguably hard target with how I am playing them. Uh, to give some more survivability. Shadow Strike um, kind of goes um, back to the dealing much damage once um, or with Conceal even twice per mission. I was never a big fan of that, uh, so I wouldn't rate it super high. But Profile, on the other hand, is great. Mm, but uh, Bladestorm is even better. The amount of uh, counterplay that you get with Bladestorm by just positioning yourself next to someone with a 100% chance to hit them is just incredibly good. So I would definitely go for Bladestorm, super strong ability. Uh, if you go uh, the Blade Master route, if you're not going down the Blade Master route, I would probably go for low profile. Uh, it's a strong ability even if you're sneaking or if you're doing something weird in between. Next up. Tech Sergeant, uh, Hunter's Instinct, uh, allows you to get two damage against flank targets. That uh, nicely uh, can be combined with the whole Ghost Walker up to an enemy, flank them, and then deal substantial amounts of damage once. You know, um, might work for someone, um, and I can definitely see how to uh, get it to work, uh, just as a kind of surprise unit. Um, I personally think it is... Um, not as powerful as the other options, specifically since it says range attacks only, and since uh, the way that I'm playing them is melee focused, um, 
By the way, I probably forgot to mention that they buffed melee weapons pretty substantially. Uh, they now have on-hit trigger effects uh, like stun uh, and um, uh, burn, which is uh, full crowd control. Uh, so there is a reason why the why they are pretty uh, damn good. Evasive allows you to start with 100% dodge, and the bonus is removed after the first shot. Um, uh, so it actually reduces the bonus by the hit chance of the enemy, so you theoretically can have it for multiple uh, shots. The problem with evasive is it just reduces uh, the 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 hit by one category and whilst it is great it gets in so um in to a degree obsolete as uh, your character progresses and gets natural sources of dodging as well as it's a good ability to just stay alive and uh, i could see how someone could um, skill that with a melee build i personally like reaper <clears throat> although it has been nerfed the, the class here offers you the ability to just finish up um, uh, enemies and uh, Reaper just substantially improves the damage output on top of uh, on top of what it is doing. So I would definitely go for Reaper. Gunnery Sergeant, Tradecraft, that's an interesting one uh, because it does not look great on paper. In reality, it is fantastic. Tradecraft uh, reduces uh, the infiltration time um, uh, uh, for the soldier um, on missions to a point where you can just take an extra soldier with you. And that in itself is a really, really, really good ability. So I would not underestimate it. It's actually quite powerful. Uh, hit and run is very, very good um, on, uh, the, uh, on the Shinobi. Uh, the reason why I uh, value it highly is if you play your cards right, you get a lot out of it. For instance, moving next to a target, uh, essentially flanking it, then taking a shot with uh, hit and run, softening up the target, maybe even proccing uh, ammunition that you have in your gun, and then after you've uh, procced uh, the, the damage, you still get an extra turn to then attack with your melee weapon, and uh, on top of it, if the enemy is not dead yet, Bladestorm um, can actually hit it down. Finally, Whirlwind, uh, with your melee att uh, attack um, uh, during your turn, you gain a bonus move, which kind of gets rid of the problem that um, uh, that uh, you had with melee characters to begin with. This here essentially allows you to become a Templar, in a sense that you can charge in, take a attack, and then move out again. You don't even need to kill the enemy. I personally like mobility a lot, but I can see a world where the other two abilities are also good. My um, uh, advice would be think hard about what you want to do with the character. If it is an extra uh, body um, and you have problems with infiltration, Tradecraft is the way to go. If you feel really confident with your positioning, hit and run is a very strong additional damage output. And if uh, you want to make sure that uh, you actually do uh, what the typical hit and run um, is, then Whirlwind is um, is just very strong because you can charge in, charge out, no harm, no foul. I personally in this build will probably go with hit and run um, and have the Reaper ability on top of it, so uh, the character class has a lot of agency. Finally, Master Sergeant Concealment, super strong ability, gives you the option to re-conceal once per mission. Uh, specifically, if you are scouting, that's a great option. Rapid Fire, you already know that that's the S tier plus ability. And in my book, um, since it triggers, the first shot triggers with hit and run, what you can do, and I will basically um, uh, skill that uh, with this character, you can move to someone, um, a Rapid Fire um, at that person. Um, and hit and run allows you to take another slash afterwards. The only thing um, that might convince me to s instead go for Whirlwind is that I do have the extra ability light them up, uh, which is pretty much hit and run um, because you can take a shot before uh, and it's not ending your turn. So uh, light them up 
in that particular case I would deviate from the hit and run. Anyways, back to the standard of how the character class can be built. Hit and run and rapid fire together make for a great um, combination. Coup de grass is a bonus to hit and critical chance um, uh, with uh, the melee weapon against disoriented, stunned or panicked uh, enemies. That is actually much better than uh, than it reads because whenever you do have an effect running on uh, the enemy, that here will allow you to deal substantially more uh, damage um, and basically crit. That being said, uh, the final build for me would uh, probably still be Blade Master into com uh, competitiveness, uh, covert, uh, just so you can keep the stealth. Uh, it's the only uh, it's the only ability that I would take up here. Arguably, uh, Tradecraft and Conceal are good as well. Um, then Blade Storm into Reaper uh, that just rounds out the um, the damage potential, and then you do have either the option for Tradecraft and Conceal. To be more of a scout type of character, those four abilities here will carry you all the way um, with the melee uh, track regardless, or if you want to deal more damage, it's hit and run plus rapid fire time, giving you that extra oomph uh, to uh, move, shoot, and then slash, maybe even with Reaper trigger uh, Reaper for some more uh, follow-up actions. That was the Shinobi, still a good character class. Um, I like using them and they make good officers. Thank you for watching and please tell me how you skill your Shinobis. Take care, bye bye.